So moving forward, without further ado. Um, so we were finishing off before lunch with our section on visual schedules and visuals in general and how you can use visuals to help kids. So I just wanted to throw a few more ideas at you. Um, this is a, uh, what do you call those, a screenshot uh, showing a portion of one of the tools that we use in our bike program. So every day in the bike program, the kids learn, like a, there's like a lesson, right? So one day it's like parts of the bike, uh, one day it's uh, safety. Um, so we had, we wanted to teach the kids about how to wear a bike helmet and like what to look for to know that your bike helmet is safe. So it came up with, I think like the four S's or something like, does it have a sticker? Is it on straight? Is it snug? I don't remember what the other one is. So I uh, found it very helpful with the kids to actually have something they can hold in their hands to reference as we talked about each concept. And then we would actually, we actually had a kid come up and demonstrate the right way, like what straight looks like, and then the wrong way. And the rest of the kids in the group would go, yeah, thumbs up, that looks straight, or boo, thumbs down, that doesn't look very good. But having something visual in their hand to reference as we talked about each of these concepts really, really helps the kids keep on track as opposed to just sort of standing up and talking about something. Um, here's another one, ABCs of bike safety. I think it's like air brakes chain maybe. Uh, so we actually partner with the Pedal Heads program for our bike program, so their bike coaches come in and give us a lot of this content. But we created these visuals to again, just sort of make it really, really clear. So this is bad, add the air, this is good. Um, we try to adapt activities so that every participant in the program can have an active role. So we play like a parts of the bike game where they're at the front and all the kids come up and they get to take a turn pointing out a different part of the bike. For some of our kids, they can't do that, or they, they may not even be verbal to come up and say like, oh, there's the handlebars. So uh, for them, we kind of provide them with a card and we make it more like a matching activity. Okay, so so-and-so, they're gonna teach us about where to find the seat on our bike or the wheels on our bike. Okay, so here we go, we're gonna give, look, he's got wheels, okay, come up and show us where the wheels are. And then the kid can come up and actually match the picture that's on the card to the actual part on the bike. So trying to look at, this is very much like classroom teaching, like trying to look at ways we can adapt activities so that every participant can have an active role. Um, we do use contingency maps, some really big fancy term, meaning that we draw roadmaps for kids to help them understand, uh, maybe kind of leading them in certain directions to make a good choice. So this is from one of our um, uh, teen young adult social groups. And we were having, we have this kid, and by the way, parents fully on board with this, collaborative in the development of it, all that kind of thing. So uh, he was kind of, he gets very excited. And when he gets excited, he sort, of, he sort of loses his filter, even more than usual, and uh, yells a lot and sometimes swears and says things that are inappropriate. This is like a 14 year old kid. So we created a visual to really show him when I'm with my friends at CAN, I need to use nice words, calm body, quiet voice, stay with the group, meaning don't just wander away. And then I get to participate in fun activities. However, if I'm swearing, yelling, or using unkind words, uh-oh, I have to sit out with the coach for a little while, and I don't get to participate in the fun activity, and that won't be very good, right? So you can use this as kind of a, a front-loading strategy. So before he comes into the group, just reminding him, hey, remember, like this, 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 uh-oh, but if this happens, then you know, you're gonna have to sit out for a couple minutes, okay? Um, we don't go to this point very often with kids. I would say, I don't know, we hardly ever use this kind of stuff with kids. This would be a situation where, you know, we've repeatedly tried other strategies, and this is something we're gonna try just so he can clearly see the consequence, um, and, and also he's fairly disruptive to, for, to the rest of the group for us to go to this level. Uh, here's another front-loading example. So we take all of our kids in the summer program to Splashdown. I don't really like Splashdown, but whatever. It's a little less busy than the other one in Cultus Lake and less expensive. So we remind them up front uh, how we want them to go down the water slides. And we use visuals for that. So we pass these out to the group and we go through with them. Okay, so when you go down the water slide, you want to put your feet first. You want to lay on your back and cross your arms. Uh, you don't want to go down like that, crazy girl. Uh, don't go down head first, not on your tummy. You have to keep your shoulders back, right? So this is quite abstract. So obviously you can't just hand them this and be like, here's how you go down the water slide. You need to role play with them. 
So we'd actually have them go, like, is this a good way? And then again, they got to go thumbs up or thumbs down, right? Oh, okay, no. Okay, so someone come up and show me how you should put your arms when you go down the water slide. So making it a really interactive uh, lesson. And again, the more information you give up front, the less nagging you need to do later when they get it, if they get it wrong. Uh, I'm going to skip that just because we're going to run out of time. Okay, token boards. Really not my favorite name for a tool, but it is what it is. So this is a token board. Um, I like to think of them more like point systems because I think that's more kid friendly. So uh, we have all kinds of these pictures. So I don't know if you guys at the back can see, but there's about 10 squares and they each have an angry bird that I can put on. We also have ones with like, I don't know, name a character. We have a token board that has that character on it. The kid gets to pick what they want to do for their break, right? And then I can just go through with the kid and I can pick 10 different things that I want him to work on. And each time he does one of those things, he gets to earn an Angry Bird. And let me tell you, for some of the kids, getting the Angry Bird is like awesome. <laughs> They're like, woo, I got another Angry Bird. So even that in and of itself is exciting. So I might say to the kid, you know, here we are in the pool. Okay, what would you like to do next for your break? Oh, okay, I want to go down the slide or oh, I want to play with the diving rings or whatever. Okay, cool. All right, so we're going to get 10 Angry Birds and then we get to go down the slide. Okay, first thing I want to practice is let's practice jumping in off the side. Yay, good job. There's your Angry Bird. Okay, give me a high five. Woohoo, great listening. There's your Angry Bird. So I can throw in some really easy things to give them some points too. Okay, now let's practice your back floats. Awesome job. There's your Angry Bird, right? I don't have to use 10. I can just say five. Like, it's totally up to me how many points he has to get before he gets to here. Um, the reason I like this is because it's a bit more, um, it allows you to do a variety of activities versus usually when you use a countdown strip, you're going to do the same thing over and over and over again. So five kicks or five attempts at the station or five times through the obstacle course. Whereas with this, I could do 10 completely different skills and just slap them on there really quick. And then he gets the break to go down the slide or whatever. Again, this works really well. Um, just like you saw in the video with Eden and Allie, as just a way to get the structure in the lesson so that the kid understands we're going to do 10 things and then we get to take our next break, right? And they're kind of like, okay, and it becomes a visual contract. You can just work through it. Um, yeah, so it's not always about, again, like a, a language issue or something like that. Sometimes it's just adding that structure really helps kids. We have parents who from time to time will say to us, hey, like these are things that my son or daughter is working on at home. Can you use the points board to work on those things that can? Of course, right? And sometimes the parents say, you know, we want for, for his reward, we're going to give him, I don't know, half an hour of iPad time when he gets home, or we're going to get, we're going to go to Dairy Queen on the way home or whatever it is. The parent wants to select the reward and have them work for certain things. Sure, right? No problem. We can collaborate on that too. So you can do it a variety of different ways. Uh, let me just show you briefly this video of Caitlin using a token board with this little guy. So she gets him to put it on so he can realize, yep, I've got my three. Because now we're going to do a back float. Five, four, three, two, one. Sometimes she lets him pick. Do you want a red angry bird or a yellow angry bird? Even that is quite exciting. You see, this is a kid who is very distracted in this environment. So this is really about just keeping him focused, moving things forward. But yeah, he's this kid who's like always kind of off left, right, and center and works really well when he understands we're going to do 10 things and then I get my break for the toys or I get to put on the slide or whatever it is. And he's totally happy using that system. Uh, also, I'm a big fan of timers. So uh, I think that they tend to make the end of an activity predictable. So for some things that are maybe not the favorite for certain kids. I'm going to show you a video later if we have time of one of our kids working on uh, treading water. <laughs> and we really wanted to gradually increase the amount of time that he was practicing treading water. 
So we used a visual timer to show him so that he would actually know that, oh, when the visual timer's, like as long as the timer's still running, I need to keep my hands off the, the side of the wall kind of thing. Um, really nice for transitions. So um, I'm remembering a kid we had at soccer camp last summer. He really enjoyed the station. We have like a break station where they get to color in the shade. And of course he really loved that. So we would use the timer and say, look, like one more minute of coloring and then we're gonna go try this for whatever. And then you can come back. And he responded very well. So as soon as he could see the timer's done, okay, I accept that, timer's done. Off I go, get to try this, and then I know I can come back if I want another break. So here's a video. This fella is like the most easygoing dude I have ever met. He's always just like super relaxed, laid back, smiley. But he came into our fitness program and we would say to him like, okay, we're gonna ride the bike first. And he would kind of like get on and then he would sort of pedal and then he would just stand up and walk away. And we were trying to show him like, look, like, you, like showing him the digital timer that was on the, uh, the bike, not a good cue for him. I don't know how much he understands time or, or that kind of thing. So we used uh, a visual timer app that you can get for the iPad or the iPhone. It's called visual timer, literally. I think it's 99 cents. Uh, and what that app does is it reveals a picture and you can take your own picture and put it there. They have a bunch of pictures, you can load whatever you want. But there's also something called a time timer. I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with that. No? That's actually like something you use, um, not on an iPad, it's just a visual timer where as that red, or in this case the blue disappears, the time is running out. So we taught him, okay, you need to stay on the bike until all the blue is gone, no problem. Sits on the bike, waits till the blue is gone, he gets it after that. Not an exciting video, just to show you that he did it. <laughs> pedal, 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 pedal. Sometimes his feet come out of the pedals. Adjust, keep pedaling. Oh, it is free. Sweet, okay, thanks Tara.